to review. In the last video, we added the change internal clock to 48 megahertz function. We created that function, which is included here. We can go to that function, clicking the right mouse button and going to open declaration. And we are in that file here. So this is the code that allows us to change the internal clock speed to 48 megahertz. Let's get out of this. And we enable the GPIO A because pin 9 and pin 10 of GPIO A is reserved for the USART 1 transmit and receive pins. So we're setting those two pins up as the alternate function for the USART 1, which is done right here. Next, we enable the USART 1 feature and we are setting the oversampling and 1 bit majority vote system. And to get the baud rate to 9600 baud, we use the 5000 value because we are dividing 48 million by 5000 to get 9600 baud, 9600 bits per second transmit speed. In this video, we're going to continue on with the USART initialization, beginning with the setting up of the data frame. And we're going to do a test of the transmit so we can see if the microcontroller is truly transmitting information from the microcontroller to whatever we decide to hook it up to. So let's talk about the data frame for a moment. The data frame consists of a start bit, a number of bits to form a word or a byte, which is just a character or something like that, which is like um, the letter A or a question mark or something like that. A parity bit, and a parity bit is only used for determining if a problem occurred in the communication. It's really sort of a check. And then one, 1 1.5 or two stop bits. The idle on the line like the, the transmit line or the receive line, it's always going to be a high line, a high signal. So it's going to be at the top. This is, the top would be a one and the bottom would be a zero. So a line going across here would be a high or a one. So the start bit has to be a zero to tell the other device that's receiving that a byte is coming to form code Let's take a look at this in a vertical way. So we're going to be setting a start bit. Then we're going to form the byte. So set bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it doesn't have to have eight bits. It can have actually nine bits or seven bits as well. It's how you're going to set up the data frame, which we'll talk about in a second. Then we either use a parity bit or not. And that is in the setup of the data frame. We can elect not to use a parity bit if we feel uh, that we're, the communication is gonna be error free or this isn't a critical application. And then we have the two stop bits. So this is an example of like how we would write our code to create the data frame. But let's go ahead and set up the data frame first. So let's Take a look at what we need to change. The start bit is something we're going to either set. The start bit is not something we can change, but let's put it there anyway. We need to set the number of bits in the byte and then parity and stop bit. So let's take a look at the reference manual. So let's go to the data sheet, the programming reference manual. And let's go to the USART section. And specifically, I'm interested in the control register one for now. And the control register has pretty much everything we'll need to set the data frame. Right off the bat, we can see that it starts with the M1, which is the word length. There's also an M0 we should look at as well. But let's take a look at M1. And if M1, which is bit number 28, this is the one of the bits included with also with M0. So you need to Take a look at M0 and M1. So M0 is here at number 12 and M1 is at number 28. And these work together to determine what specifications for the data frame 
specifically for the start bit and the data bits. So let's take a look at M0. Let's see if it has M0 here, okay. So this particular one determines a zero and a one for either eight data bits or nine data bits. So let's take a look at M1. So you can see that if M0 is zero, which is right here, that's eight data bits. If M0 is one, then it's nine data bits. M1 is both zero in those two cases. So well, I'm never gonna use seven data bits. I'm always gonna be using probably eight or nine, but in this particular demonstration, I'll be using eight data bits. So this actually, the M1 and the M0 need to be zero. You can see M0, for zero, it's eight data bits. So those two, the M0 and M1, work together in determining the eight, nine, or seven data bits. It can also be noted that zero, zero is the reset value. So it's automatically set for eight data bits. We can go ahead and add those lines of code just so we make sure that we're setting it for eight data bits. Okay, to change the word length, we access the control register one and the usart one. We're gonna be turning off, which is resetting or setting the M0 and M1 to zero. So the and not bitwise operation is gonna be used. See so if we can do both of them at the same time. Let's see what it gives us using the control space bar. I don't see the M0 and M1, so that's interesting. Let's look at the M. Let's go to the, um, the declaration. I'm clicking on the right button on the on this define and open, open declaration, and it says word length, which is the correct one. By setting this to zero, it'll be eight data bits, and setting it to one will be nine data bits. So I don't see where the M1 is located. The M0 was at the 12th bit location and the M1 was at the 28th bit location. And it looks like there is no such location. Okay, so I guess we'll just use the M0. That's all we have to do to set it for eight data bits. So this is setting, setting the word length to eight data bits. Now let's look at parity. So there are two bits in the control register for parity. One is either enabling it or disabling it, which its reset value is disabling. And you can select which one you wanna use, even or odd. I'm not gonna enable it for this particular demonstration, so I'm gonna just keep it at zero. And it doesn't really matter which one this is on because it'll be disabled. If you do use the parity and enable it, and you set it either to even or odd, you'll have another bit in the ISR, the status register, the interrupt and status register, and you'll have a PE, and this is a parity error. So you can determine whether there was a parity error or not. And this is mainly used in the, re the receiving portion of, of the serial communication. So when this parity error shows up, you can do whatever you need to do to either inform of the error or, or send to the, uh, to the transmitting side that there was an error and you can request that that information be resent, possibly. So let's go back to the control register. And the last part of the data frame is the stop bit. So let's take a look at that. I think that's in the control register too. So where is it? Stop bits here. Okay, so it has two, two bits. So let's take a look at what we have to do on that one. On the stop bits, the reset value is zero, zero. Let me just double check that. Yeah, the reset value is zero, zero and that means it has one stop bit. A data frame has to have a start bit and a stop bit, so it informs the receiver that that is the, the data frame, the beginning and the end of the data frame. And in this particular case, I'm using, or it's reset to one stop bit, and I'm gonna maintain that reset state. I need to set that at the reset, the reset condition. So that was the PCE, and I wanna make sure that that's disabled. All right, so let's first disable the parity feature. And we're looking for PCE. Now for the stop bit, we're gonna only have one stop bit. This is in CR2. And since we're resetting it, we're using the and not operation. Okay, all right, so we have completed the setup of the data frame. We are going to do a transmit test. So we're gonna test uh, the market controller and transmit it to a device. In this case, we're gonna transmit it to 
a logic analyzer. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but um, we want to enable the transmit. But if you are going to use another device as a receiving, like a computer or the server that we're going to be doing later on, you'd need to do all of this. You need to set that device to these settings as well. And so you'll want to make a note of the settings that you've created here. And when we, you get to the setting of the next device, you'll need to remember how you set this. So let's go ahead and enable the transmit. We're not going to enable the receive because we're just not going to transmit and then receive back to uh, to the same microcontroller. That wouldn't make any sense. We all, although we could probably do that, um, and we can look at uh, various uh, variables. We could set up variables in the program and uh, see how the variables react in our testing. But I'd rather do this using a logic analyzer. It's a device that you're able to see what's going on on the USART transmit line and it serves as like another device and it's receiving and we will have to set it up exactly the way we're setting it up here so we'll need to set that up for the eight data bits and uh, disabling the parity and using one stop bit so let's go ahead and do the transmit enable and carry on with the programming okay so the transmit enable is bit number three on the control register one. So for transmit enable, where we want to enable it, so we want to put a one there. We're using the or bitwise operation because we're setting this transmit enable. And now we actually still need to enable the USART. And I know that I said that we're doing that here, but this is actually just enabling it under the reset clock and control register. We actually need to enable the USART. We set everything up with the USART first, and then we need to actually enable the USART in the control register. USART enable here, the UE. This is when you actually enable the USART and all of the control parameters uh, being set in the USART need to be set before this actually happens. So the UE is the main uh, mechanism that starts the USART, and then you can start to communicate after that. So let's go ahead and enable the USART. And putting one there is USART enabled. So let's use the OR bitwise operation to enable the USART. Now we're ready to start transmitting. Because these three are all the AND NOTs, you could actually put this in one line and just put all three of these as an OR, ORing each other, as you've seen me done in previous videos. And this one as well, we could do this in one line if we wanted to. But in this particular case, I'm gonna keep it in as separate just so it's more clear what's going on in this tutorial. And specifically, we're going to be only doing a transmit and we're gonna test the line using the logic analyzer to see what's being transmitted. The way that this microcontroller allows you to send data over the transmit line is it has a register called the TDR, the Transmit Data Register. There's also a shift register. And then there's a flag called the TXE, the Transmit Empty. And that is a single bit, a zero or a one. The transmit data register is nine bits long. That is because you can either have seven, eight, or nine bit data, depending on how you configured the data frame. And the shift